Hi everyone, it's Laura. I'm sorry I'm running a few minutes behind today, but I'm glad you're here. Let me just double check to make sure I'm in the right place. Um, give you a couple seconds to check on here and find me. Um, so this week I've been featuring um, projects made with the True Love Designer Series paper and it's the black and white paper in our January to June mini catalog. I love that paper. I always love a good black and white combination. And then of course you can pull in other colors. Um, let me just, I just, I'm checking here to make sure I'm in the right place. Hopefully some of you will find me. If you're there, leave me a comment. So I know you're watching. Okay, there's Myra. Hi Myra. Okay, I'm gonna wait just a second and see if hopefully some other people will hop on. I have a super cute project to share with you today, again, featuring that um, True Love Designer Series paper. Um, can't wait to share it. I'm going to flip my phone down. Bonjour, Marsha. <laughs> Marsha loves French, so she she always um, likes to speak in French, and I know a little bit of French. I took it um, actually all through college um, and in high school as well. So, hi, everybody. Okay, people are starting to find me now. I was running a little bit late, but... Um, I appreciate you joining me. So I'm going to switch my camera down so that you can see what I have in store for us today. And give me one second. Let me just do that. Okay. So like I said, let me just show you really quickly. This is the True Love Designer Series paper. It's black and white, which I always love. And on one side, it's like different dots and geometric shapes and patterns. And then when you flip it over, there's all these beautiful floral images, um, which you can add color to or, you know, leave black and white, whatever you prefer. And hi, Debbie, glad you're here too. So this, hi, Candy. Um, this is a card that I made. I actually did a little video yesterday and it is on my blog today. So I used uh, the True Love Designer Series paper and it's kind of a neat neat technique, I thought. it was. It's three different pieces. It starts out as one and then you cut it and position it on your card front so that it's spread out with the color. This is Rococo Rose, you know, going between each of the little panels. So go to my blog at lauramilligan.com. Today's post is already up and running. You can watch the video to see how I made this. Um, I made a little boo-boo though on my video. Um, when I put the card together, I forgot. I made the front part and then I forgot to add it to the card base. So I never really finished the card, but hopefully you'll be able to figure that part out. I, I just thought I would go with it rather than starting all over and making another video. I think, I think you know how to attach this to your card base, but this is, it's just a fun, cute, different idea with, with the designer paper. So today what I want to show you is this, I'm going to make this, this is a card holder and this would be perfect for a gift. Um, and I made this so that you just slide the front flap down, the ribbon stays in place, and then you open it up and there is a place to hold a set of cards. I did four cards and four envelopes. And I know I showed you last time how to add the um, paper to the flap of the envelope. I just think it dresses it up and, and makes it a little more special. So the cards, I'm gonna show you how to make this carrier but the cards that I made, again, are the black and white. I added a touch of petal pink this time. This is the designer paper, True Love designer paper. And I just cut these, um, the different designer papers, different ways to make these different cards. So there's a deepest sympathy. There's a thinking of you with all my heart, happy birthday, and then a thank you. So this one is similar to what I made on Monday, but rather than do four strips, I just did two strips of designer paper and add, again, added the touch of pink. Thank you, Marsha, I'm glad you think it's pretty. Um, happy birthday, so this is a bigger piece and then a smaller piece. This one I'm gonna make for you today, so I won't go into that. And then this one, it's just cut in thirds. So those are the cards that I made to go in this carrier. But first, I think I'll show you how to make the, the carrier, and then I'll do the card. 
So what I did was, and I will have all these measurements on my blog. This will go up tomorrow. But I took two pieces of basic black cardstock, and it's cut four and a half by eight and three quarters. You need two of these. One will be the front, one will be the back. I took my um, paper trimmer and used the scoring blade and scored this at one and a half inches, each one just on one end at four and a half inches. And this is what we're going to, this holds, I call it the carrier because this will hold the cards. Yeah, I like the touch of pink too, Colleen. And thank you, Debbie. I, I think this is really pretty too and it's fun and it would make a beautiful gift for someone. Okay, so what I did was I used my tear and tape and I'm gonna just bring this in. Where's the end? There's the end. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna put some here. I'm probably gonna put two pieces on this because I want it to hold really well. So let's see, we'll do that there. Okay, and actually I don't need to put any on this end because this, this is just gonna fit right together. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this so that I can tear this off. Whoops. And same thing with this piece. You can use like your take your pick tool. It has a pokey end to it. I usually just honestly just use my fingers. Okay, so this then is gonna fit together. And I'm just gonna line it up and just butt these two ends together like that and just make sure that they're real secure and they're gonna they're gonna be just like that. So the inside of this I used, so last week if you remember, I made that little, I call it like a nest with the um, Hey Chick set. In fact, I have it right here. So I used half of one of these are clear acetate boxes. I cut it in half and created this little fun nest that just happened to be sitting right there. Oh, you know what, here's the, you're a good egg, that came off, but I need to just reattach that. So there's the nest that I did. And um, so what I did for this, for the inside of this carrier, I took the same acetate box and cut it in half again. And I cut it, it's just at four inches. I used my regular paper trimmer and it was fine. I also have like an industrial grade uh, paper cutter um, and that works really well, but you are able to do it on just your regular trimmer. So you end up with two pieces like this. Can everyone else hear me? I, I see Lynette, hi Lynette. She's saying she's not getting any sound. Hopefully you can hear me, everybody else. Colleen, Marsha, can you hear me, Debbie? Hopefully you can hear me. So I'm just gonna score these on the, on the or fold these on the score lines and put this together in my little, is a little box. Like that, there's one. Hopefully other people can hear me. Um, okay, Colleen, you can hear me. Marsha can hear me. Lynette, I don't know why you can't, but um, maybe check your volume. Oh. So I'm gonna do this one. So you're gonna do this with both halves. And really, once you make one of these, these go together pretty quickly. All right, so you have your two halves. And what you wanna do next is attach your tear and tape and you're gonna put a piece here and a piece here on both boxes and then they're gonna go right in here like this. What you don't wanna do is put tear and tape on the bottom of the box because then it's gonna, it's gonna be stuck together like this and the box won't open. So you're just gonna put tear and tape on the back side. Okay, Lynette, it sounds like everyone else can hear me, so it must be something on your end. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on here. 
Same thing with this, I'll just flip it over. I love our tear and tape. I love that you can just tear it. You don't have to cut it. Okay, now I'm gonna burnish these again and pull these off. And these are gonna be positioned um, right up to that score line. So I'll put one there and then go ahead. I'm just gonna reach in and you know what? I think I'm gonna grab my bone folder and just rub this along here to make sure that that sticks really well. Then same thing with this end. I'm just gonna pull this off. Sometimes with the tear and tape, the hardest thing to do is pull this little backing off, but it seems to be going okay today so far. Okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right, so then this will be positioned right here also right up to the fold line Or the score line. I'm sorry on this half and I'll bring my bone folder in again And just burnish that make sure that's going to stick real well All right So that's going to be my box. It just folds up like that Pretty slick. Okay then the next thing I'm going to do is put some tear and tape on the back of my box because what I thought, I thought I didn't want, um, I didn't want whoever gets this box to have to untie it and lose the ribbon. So what I thought I would do is attach it to the back here. Um, and then wrap it around. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna leave this on here a minute. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna work on the front of my box. The, it's, it's the cute part, the decorative part. And so what I did, let me pull in my parts and pieces here. So I'm just using, again, a combination of the designer paper And you can just position this. And of course you could use any different patterns. So those are gonna go on there like that, just centered. Yes, Colleen, you hear Charlie. Of course, as soon as I start doing this, he gets his little squeaky toy out or barks. <laughs> I try to time this so that our mail carrier does not arrive during this because Charlie loves him, but it sounds like he's going to take his leg off. Um, but he really actually likes him. They're friends. They're buddies. Okay, so I'm going to attach this part. Whoops. I love the stripe and the polka dot together. Okay, so that's just going to fit right on there. And then um, I'm going to do a little stamping. And I chose, I am used for this whole whole set of cards and the and this box um, I used the peaceful moments stamp set it is a great word set it came out with the poppy set um, I believe that was last spring we had the beautiful poppies and this is a word set it carried over it's still current but it has everything you need there's a thank you a sympathy a birthday thinking of you um, wishing you every happiness on this special day. So, so there's all kinds of different things. So for the front of the box, I'm using life is better with a friend like you, which I love that. That's a great, that's a great sentiment. So I'm going to ink this up with my tuxedo black memento ink and stamp that right on the front. Of that. Oh, and you know what? I'm not sure you could see that, but you know how to stamp. So I stamped that. You know what? I smeared it a little. So I'm going to just flip this over. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to bring in my little scrap piece here too. It's... Let's try it again. And this way you can watch me. You can watch me mess up if I mess up again, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm just gonna center this on here and stamp that. Okay, that looks better. I'll just, I'm not gonna touch that. I'll let that sit there for a minute. And then the next thing I did was took one of the big floral images from the designer paper and I'm gonna use my blending brushes again. I used those on Monday and I got a great response from that and so I decided to use that on this as well. Now, of course, you could use the blends. Um, that would be beautiful on this as well, but the blending brushes, I think are something different and uh, let me see if I have my inks. So I need Rococo Rose, which is right here, and then I need Old Olive, which is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the uh, Rococo Rose. Yes, Debbie, I'm not sure my mail carrier is interested in stamping. <laughs> he should take his lunch hour now, that would be fun. But anyway, so the blending brushes, I'm just gonna add some color and you just pick it up from the ink pad. And if you didn't, if you didn't watch my, catch my Facebook Live on Monday, these, if you look at this, it looks like a sponge. It is such a solid thing. It looks like sponge, a sponge, but it is actually teeny tiny little bristles and it is soft. I feel like, I know I've said this before, you could use it as like a makeup brush. Like you, you would want to put it on your face. It's so, oh, and you know what? I just realized I'm using the wrong color. I used petal pink for my sample, but luckily I have another one ready to go. But, but at least you'll know how to use the blending the blending brushes. So you just kind of swirl the color on. And I don't worry about going out of the lines. And actually for this one, I'm going to be cutting it out anyway. And now I'm going to cover this up. I don't, I'm not really concerned about the colors overlapping either. But I, I just found that if I put this post-it note um, over some of the flowers, it will, it'll at least cover part of it up so it doesn't get all green but really I don't care that um, some of the colors blend and cup like that that really truly does not bother me okay the blending brushes call uh, candy they are in the January to June mini catalog they're new with that catalog um, I don't know about cleaning these, but like what I recommend, what I've been doing is, for example, I have this one that obviously is gonna be for my green colors. I have this one that I could use for like pinks and reds. Um, they come three in a pack, so you could use, you know, different ones. Here's one I used in the card I made yesterday, I think it was, no, I'm not sure. This must, I don't know what I used this for, I can't remember, but it was yellow. So, you know, so I have these three colors. Um, you could probably just rinse them off or maybe you just, you know, if you just brush them like our, we used to have the blender pens and if you, you know, kind of like brush it on your paper, your scrap paper until you get most of the color off, then maybe you could go to a similar color. I would be careful about mixing colors, however. All right, I'm going to set that aside. So this one is Rococo Rose, but the one I am using for my box today is um, petal pink and I've already added the color. It has the old olive leaf and I have already fussy cut this out. So now I have an extra one. I could do another box or put that, this would be really pretty on a card front. Um, okay, so I'm gonna set all this aside. I'm done stamping for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my ink away or at least out of the way for a minute here. Okay. Now I'm going to put the front of this together. So that is just a matter of attaching all these different layers. So I'm going to start with this. Bring in my stamp and seal. And I'm just going to position this down towards the bottom. That. go ahead and attach that and then I'm going to take this and I will pop this up with dimensionals isn't that pretty it's such a contrast the pink against the black and the white so I'm going to go ahead and add some some of my dimensionals to the back of this
And of course, if you don't want to add color, you could actually still do this um, and just, you know, just leave it as a black and white flower. That would be really pretty too. Okay, so I'm going to take all the backings off of these, put that in place. I'm going to put it about right there. So pretty. Okay, then I'm going to attach my words. Life is better with a friend like you. And that's gonna fit just right down here. Hope let me scoot this over so you can see, sorry. It's gonna go right there. And then I'm gonna use one of my matte black dots. Love these. And I'm gonna just embellish the words with one of those. Put that right there. Okay. Then I have a little strip of designer paper um, that I'm going to put at the top of this box. And again, I, I thought it would be fun to mix up the patterns because the set of cards that this box is going to hold have all the have several different black and white patterns. So I could use this floral one here, which is probably what I'll do. I think that's really cute. But this one's cute as well. I think I'm going to do it this way though. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that with my stamp and seal. And I'll just kind of position that. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. And then I'm going to go back to, I had mentioned the ribbon. So what I'm going to do is attach my ribbon to the back here. This is this beautiful petal pink ribbon. It's edged in gold. Really, really pretty. So I'm going to find the center spot of this and just put that on the back of this box. This way, um, whoever you give this to, even if you want to keep it for yourself, I guess, um, I'm going to, so I'll bring this around and tie it in the front and, um, if they, if whoever gets it, you know, doesn't realize they don't have to untie it. I'm going to lay this flat here. Um, whoops, let me see here. Hold on. And try to tie this bow. I need like five hands to do this, right? <laughs> Maybe one of you watching could just stick your finger in here and hold this for me. That would be funny. Anyway, I'm going to tie the bow and do my best but this way the idea the reason i did it this way is because the person that gets this all they have to do then is pull this out they don't even have to untie it and even if they do untie it the ribbon will still be attached to the back so that it's still gonna you know it'll be easier for them to tie it and um make it look pretty again if they want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this again. Actually, I probably don't need to. I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Um, let me show you my finished, because I have envelopes and things in there. So all you do, so with this, you're just gonna slide it right under there, like that. Just gonna slide right under, and then when you're ready to open it up, you just slide it back, and there are your carriers for your cards. So um, I'm not going to make all of these cards today. I thought I would just show you one, um, and it's this one. They're all pretty simple. They're a little bit different, but um, basically it's just cutting the designer paper in different ways and putting together these cards. So if, like for this one, um, I'm going to start with a basic black card base. And I always line the inside, of course, with a very, with a whisper white panel as well, four by five and a quarter. And you know how to do that. But what I want to show you is this piece. So this was also this was one piece cut four by five and a quarter, and all I did was cut it. And this is, I think, let me grab my ruler here. This is one and a half inches. So I just cut one and a half inches, just slice that down. 
and then I flipped this over, one side over, and that's how I got that. So I started with just the four by five and a quarter, which is the normal panel. That was That's the same size I would put on the inside of my card with a whisper white panel. So that's gonna go right there. Thanks, Marsha. Yeah, I thought that was a good idea to have the ribbon attached to because then it's always going to be pretty. It's it's really beautiful ribbon. It's one of my favorites. I like pink. So this I'm just going to position on here. I kept these cards kind of simple. Let the designer, you know, I always say if the designer paper is so beautiful, that kind of does the work for the whole for the whole project. Okay, so I'm going to just position that there like that. So there's my card front. And then I wanted to bring in a touch of the petal pink. So I punched, this is I think a two inch circle. I'm going to go ahead and attach that. Put that there. And then I punched this. This is the... Um, Oh gosh, Taylor Tag Punch. I can't remember what the name of it is. I don't have it in front of me. I already punched it out, but um, you could actually use any shape. And I did use some of the different punches on the other cards that I made. So I'm gonna go ahead and just attach this. It's gonna go right there like that. And then I'm gonna take a little uh, panel of basic white and I'm using this sentiment, thinking of you with all my heart. I love that. And that, again, is from the Peaceful Moments stamp set. I think a lot of you probably already own that. I'm going to take my Memento Black ink, find my stamp, go ahead and ink that up. And let me move this up so you can see. I, I, sometimes stamp and you can't see what I'm doing. So there's that, thinking of you with all my heart. Love that. And then I'm just gonna take my paper snips and make a little V in the end of this panel. You're all kind of quiet today. I don't see many comments coming in. So I just made, you know, a little V in the panel, the end of that panel. And then I'm going to add some of this twine. And this is from the Playful Pets combo pack. It includes uh, this twine and then also a really cute red and white ribbon. So I'm going to wrap this around a couple times. Just like that. And then... What I like to do, because sometimes it's hard, I know for me it's hard to um, tie like twine or ribbon and get it tight enough. So what I like to do, and I use, I learned this from somebody from Stampin' Up! one time, a demonstration that I saw. But if you tie it, so you wrap it around and then you tie it in a knot. then you can ensure that your twine or ribbon is gonna be tight. And that helps me. I just, I can never get it tight if I, if I don't add that little knot. So that's a little tip for you today. You could try it. Hi, Michelle from Kentucky. I'm glad you joined us today. Hopefully you have better weather. We've had snow today. I don't know if it's warmer down in Kentucky or not, but, um, Okay, so I'm gonna fidget with that a little bit. That looks pretty good, and I'll just snip this. I don't know if you've ever joined one of my Facebook Lives, Michelle, I'm glad you're here. Um, okay, so then I'm just gonna pop this up. Let me find my dimensionals. And that's just gonna go right there, like that. And then again, I'm gonna finish it off with one of our black matte dots. Oh, you have a nice storm too. Uh, I don't mind the snow, I love the snow, but I do not like the ice. The ice is not my friend. <laughs> and 
I'll just put two of those there like that. So there's the card. And then let me show you again the other cards that I made. Um, and I can give you the measurements for these as well. Let me get my ink out of the way here. Okay. So here's this one that I just made. And then there's with deepest sympathy. This is just cut in thirds. Here's a happy birthday. This one I made the top longer and a smaller piece at the bottom. And then this one is just half and half. And you can see on this, I didn't add any color to the flower. Um, and I think that actually is really pretty as well. They all have a touch of the petal pink because that kind of brings the whole thing together and ties it into my package that, that the flower that I have on the front of this. So let me show you. So what you would do then is take your four envelopes and it, you know, again, I covered the flap and then you'll take these four cards. And of course, you know, the idea behind this, the idea behind what I'm doing this week too is, oh, hi, Anne-Marie, glad you're watching. Um, the idea behind this is ways to use designer paper because I know we all have big stashes of it and we hate to use it. We, some of us use it, but some of us hoard it. And, you know, you really need to use it and you could do this same idea with any designer paper that you have, but I'm just focusing on this um, true love paper because I love it. So I'm gonna slip the four cards here into this. Like that. And then I'll put my, I have my four envelopes here. And then I'm gonna close this up. And again, what I'm gonna do is just slide this under, right like this. Hopefully, there we go. And just pull my ribbon down a little bit and the ribbon secures it. And there you have a super cute little carrier, a little gift to give to, to anyone with cards. And I know that people love to receive cards like this as gifts. They love using them. And even if they're not crafty or stampers, they will really appreciate a gift like this. Um, So those are my projects for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will be back on Monday. Um, I have um, sort of in my mind what I'm gonna do for you next week. Um, it'll feature some different products and thank you so much for watching today. I hope you all have a great day. The sun is shining here, so that makes a huge difference. It's nice to have sunshine, isn't it, in the winter, in the dreary winter. Sometimes in Ohio, it gets pretty dreary, but I wanna thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love for you to um, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying really hard to grow my subscriber numbers. And if you would subscribe, I would be very grateful. And that way you'll also know anytime, you'll be notified anytime I, share a video and I'm doing more and more videos now for better or worse, right? But um, if you'd like to um, do that, if you'd like to know when I'm, when I post a new video, um, if by subscribing, you will get that notification and I would be very grateful. So thanks again for joining me today. And as always, I hope you have time to be creative today. Take care, everyone. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.